And we're back, guys, for another episode of the On and Off Pod with uh, with Ads and Dunks. Obviously, my name's Adam, and uh, my fellow co-host Josh over here. How are you, mate? Good, thanks, Adam. How are you, mate? I'm good. It's uh, good to do another pod. We haven't done one, done one in a while. Yeah, that's right. We've uh, taken a couple of weeks off, but we've done some YouTube stuff, which has been going well. Yeah, it has been. It's people, been. Have, people have liked the challenge video that, uh, that 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 we put up recently this weekend, and um, one of the common themes was everyone's bagging me for my spelling. Well, to be able to spell boy, we'll ask our, our actual guest that we've got on here today because we'll bring him into the conversation right now. Uh, Hayden Crozier, welcome, mate. Thanks, Thanks man. Coming. Yeah, it's a big day for me, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for being on, mate. Can uh, you spell boy? Do you know how to spell boy? Not, not B- the B-U-O-Y? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how Adam spelt it? Did you watch the video? Oh, I don't know. But what did he say? B-O-Y-E or something? <laughs> B-O-U. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. Wait, what was... I still Is it B-U-O-Y, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, I didn't even remember how I spelled it. I thought he was going to say B O I. Yeah, boy. boy. B O I I. But anyway, we're here for Crozzy. Yeah, we've uh, we've spoken about Crozzy probably since uh, since our first episode. Really, um, he's one of our dear friends and obviously a Western Bulldogs teammate. Um, hails from out my way, out in Roville, southeast boy. Yeah, southeast pure class out that way, as you know. So uh, yeah, it was uh, brought up in the mud, mate. But yeah, good to be here. <laughs> um, and we've been talking about getting Crosby on for a while now, and obviously you guys have been teammates for a long time. So as we said, we're privileged to have you on, and um, yeah, looking forward to a fun episode. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Be good. So Crosby, tell us a little bit about yourself, mate. For those that don't know, obviously Adam just mentioned where you grew up, but your footy pathway. We'll talk about, you know, draft and all that kind of stuff and draft night with your mum and yeah, <laughs> tell us about that. exactly what I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Roval, as Ad's mentioned, um, big sporting family. So uh, mum and dad, mum used to play basketball, dad was cricket and footy um, and my older brother, big cricketer, footy as well. So um, yeah, sporting family, grew up in Roval, played for Roval Hawks, probably the best junior club <laughs> of all of Australia. Uh, we are lucky enough to play in a lot of good teams. Um it's funny because I played in a, a footy and a cricket grand final every year from under nines to under 16. So very lucky to play in some good teams. Um, How many of those did you win? Oh, we lost probably two or three, I reckon. So, yeah. Rate right yourself as a cricketer, don't you? Oh, mate, I was... <laughs> better better <laughs> cricket or footy? Oh, back when I was early teens, cricket, yeah. But I just didn't have... Yeah, I just couldn't concentrate, mate. <laughs> just try to smoke everything through covers. So... <laughs> Uh-huh. That's ridiculous, though, that you've actually won. You actually won a premiership. Oh, sorry, you played in a grand final um, most years and won what? So if you played from nines to sixteens, and you said you only lost two or three, and that's cricket and footy. Yeah, so I've that's won almost ten premierships. Yeah, I've won won a lot, won a lot, which is good. How um, many premierships have you won, Dunks? In just in terms of just your sporty, footy? yeah, just your whole your whole career. Uh, we won twelves, fourteens, sixteens, seniors, and AFL, AFL five. It's and I've never won one. It's not bad. Well, my dad, my dad only played in one grand final ever, and he got king in a quarter time. <laughs> he got knocked out, so he's pretty envious of my uh, my pathway. Of there. your achievements, but yeah. it's funny. Also, mention cricket um, and your footy, obviously journey coming through. But not many people would know that. Um, well, what's your background? What actually is your background? Yeah, so uh, my dad's Sri Lankan. So I think I'm the only Sri Lankan AFL player at the moment. Well, definitely men's football. I think there yep. was there was one girl from the AFL women's that was uh, that has a Sri Lankan background so lucky to represent the great <laughs> country of so Sri Lanka you, you speaking of you were on the front page of a magazine weren't you over there well you they haven't they haven't really? published it yet so <laughs> I'll actually have to crazy. chase that one up but um, <laughs> yeah I was I was getting hassled on the gram for a couple of years actually by this one lady that I um yeah I caved in and, and did an interview with her which is actually a lot of fun but I don't, I'm not sure if it's been posted yet I think they're Wait for me to get back in the side first. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> was your, <laughs> was your, did you so your old man would have played cricket? Yeah. Did he play? Was that the reason why you wanted to play cricket? Initially? Uh, yeah, initially it, it was. We were. I was lucky enough. I grew up on a on a street where there was a lot of kids my age as well. So like we'd come home from school and we'd be out in the street till all hours playing footy, cricket, basketball. So very lucky to grow up where I did. Um, but yeah, dad played uh, a lot of cricket growing up and a lot of footy as well. The way he actually started to make friends when he first came over from Sri Lanka, you're like this. He bought a plastic footy to school and all the kids got around him. He had like a big Collingwood supporter as yeah, well. So yeah. we had the woolen Collingwood oh, shirt that he, wow. that he bore to school. So <laughs> that's the way he started to get a few mates. But um, yeah, dad was dad was a good cricketer. He was, uh, I'd want to say he was Australian under 23s. He played, oh, wow. he played a lot of district cricket. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's basically uh, cricket was in the blood. Basically, so he didn't, he didn't represent 
Sri Lanka. <laughs> no, no. So he moved to Australia when he was about five or six. Okay. So um, yeah, none of none of his family are there. Because I was going to say, when you were a kid growing up and you like to emulate cricketers. Oh, it was Kumar Sangakara. <laughs> Sangakara. Or Sangakara. Or Joss Maria. Mahai Joe Wardner. Yeah, Mahai <laughs> Joe Wardner. Was yeah. he Maligar? I thought oh. you would have been uh, rep- um, trying to impersonate one of those guys. But um, no, well, that's a very interesting because when I obviously first had, you know, come to know a little bit more about you, I would not have thought you had a Sri Lankan background, which is a pretty cool little um, cool little thing to have. No, nah, no one does. But yeah, back to the uh, back to the footy journey. So I played... For Roval all the way to under 16s, um, and then uh, played at Eastern Rangers TAC Cup, um, strong rival of the Dan Nong Stingrays. So, um, yeah, was lucky to play under Darren Buick for two years, learnt a lot from him, um, a lot of my footy journey to him, and yeah, was lucky enough to get drafted by Freo. One of the one of the marks of the yeah, a century in the uh, under 18s, wasn't it? One of the many marks of the centuries. But this oh, is well, the best I, one. I probably dropped about 400 in my career, so I was lucky <laughs> enough to hold on to a couple. I reckon I've got the photo here. You would have the photo there somewhere, wouldn't you? Oh, it's my background. <laughs> <laughs> which mark? Which mark? <laughs> oh, which one? Take your pick. <laughs> nah, um, yeah, it was, well, growing up, like, speaking about my, my footy journey, like, in the street, all we used to do was just try to take hangers yep. on each other the whole time. Yep. And um, I was a big Collingwood fan, so Chris Tarrant used to take hangers every yeah, week. Yeah. Um, Dale Thomas as well So yeah I'd always try um, Use my leap to my advantage We've been talking about this of late Because They are hard to take And you, you Remember the other day We were having that conversation About what goes through your mind What you focus on And things like that What do you focus on When you're up there Or just before the ball comes um, It's pretty instinctual Like you don't really think too much I just watch the ball I think at the last moment Before I jump I just have like a quick glance down Just to see Sort of who's underneath you Because if they're too the far step away going to be yeah. yeah well <laughs> It can go very wrong Very quickly And um, especially with modern day footy You don't want the ball Going over the back Or a soft yeah, drop yeah, So you, yeah. you want to mark it But um, yeah I don't really think too much I just sort of Back my instincts in And, and hope to hold it I do take most of them On my chest though Sometimes yeah, you don't no, trust yeah, One that. thing I've noticed too With Howie Because we had Howie on He was He's always in the hands, yeah. hands out, yours yeah. is chest. I felt like sometimes if you get that initial ride, like the, the ball sort of moves in the air as well, so your hands got to go pretty quick. So if you sort of go early enough, you can just yeah. take it on yeah, the chest. Well, I wouldn't know, mate. I've got no idea. You took a big, you took a big hanger <laughs> last year. Calf oh, raise. No. Yeah. <laughs> a nice little car phrase. <laughs> Isn't it? Didn't you? I remember you were telling me, oh, well, I would have just been recently about um, talking about your marking ability. That mark you took playing Metro over in WA, that kind of, not, not that you weren't going to get drafted, but didn't that help? You know, recruiters start to recognise you because that, that wasn't the whole reason, but you, you obviously played better after that. But that was part of the reason why that then fast-tracked you to – because you were top 20 pick, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, 20. Yeah, that then fast-tracked you to be a top 20 pick ultimately. Yeah, well, all my uh, schoolmates used to get into me a fair bit saying the other reason you got drafted was from that was mark. Thing. But um, yeah, it was the third game in the national championships. I'd played decent in the first two. Um, and then this was sort of like – not the coming out party, but it was like yeah. it was probably the best game I'd played – for a couple of years, um, kicked a few, um, playing up forward and, and took that mark as well. So it was probably, I don't know if you'd say it was smart taking it in WA in front of free our West Coast scouts. but <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Well, this, is, this is what I was leading into before about draft night because I want you to tell the story about that. Can tell I swear on this? Or no? <laughs> Am I allowed to? You can do whatever, whatever you, want. you want, mate. We can beep it out. Beep it out. Boys can beep um, it out. Yeah, so draft night, um, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd caught up with a fair few clubs throughout the year and I'd caught up with a few clubs sort of in the three days leading up to the draft. Um, and there wasn't a guarantee as such, but one of the teams said, you know, we'll we'll take you if, we're, if you're there at our pick. And so it got to draft night. And I think just based on sort of how raw I was in terms of body weight, like I was 67 kilos in my draft year. So like it was going to take time. Have you seen photos of him? Yeah. 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 Toughen up, but oh, skinny. We used to play, <laughs> we used to play against other tack cut. That's how I remember. Yeah. yeah so, um, and... Teams probably knew it was going to be sort of a bit of a project play. It was going to take a little bit of time. So I wasn't too sure. I sort of had a – because obviously in that year, 2011, with all the Jitto West picks, obviously you went the year before in the the pre-draft stuff. But um, Well, that was the thing because there was – we had eight picks out of the first ten and then we had, I think, four or five from ten to twenty. So there's 15 picks pretty much. Well, 13 picks in the first 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so our our year – the first round went to pick 30 instead of what it is now, yes, 18. Yes, that's right, yes. Um, so I was I was pretty certain I was going to go sort of top 25-ish. Um, there was a few sort of murmurs leading up um, that, was, that my manager was sort of saying, you know, you might even go, you know, higher than what we think. You might drop a little bit. So I didn't really know. Um, and then 
yeah, got to the picks of the teams that I thought I was going to go to, which were Melbourne-based teams, um, and it didn't happen. And then uh, 20 was Freo, and so I saw my great mate Tommy Sheridan go to Freo. So Freo had picked 16 and 20, and I remember when Freo drafted Tommy, um, and I was like, Tommy's going to Perth. Like, I'd actually spent a little bit of time in Perth with one of my brother's uh, cricket carnivals, and I loved it. So I knew all along that if I wanted to go interstate, it was going to be Perth. Just a lifestyle, good warm weather, um, love the beach. So, um, yeah, got to pick 20 and Dad sort of looked at me. He was like, I, I think you'll go here. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then obviously <laughs> they've gone, they've, they've read out my name. Um, and you don't really know, like, I was stoked either way. And yeah. I always said in the lead up, I, it, it truly didn't bother me where I went. Obviously, ideally, you'd want to stay in Melbourne. Yeah. But just the opportunity just to start your life as an AFL player that you always dreamed of, about. So, uh, yeah, it was pick 20 Freo and all I heard was... <laughs> and it was a, it was loud too Like real loud Everyone sort of was like Turn around look, Thinking that it, mo- it was coming from You The, the party of the Croziers <laughs> And sort of uh, Looked to my left Mum's bawling her eyes out So oh. I'm like Straight away I'm like Well it's definitely coming from her Because yeah. my old man Even if he was flat He would have just done that like, <laughs> like Just wouldn't have done much um, So yeah like Dad dad was stoked um, My brother was obviously stoked Because yeah. it's Um yeah, obviously the first one in the family to play professional sports was obviously very special, but it took mum a little bit of adjusting. Yeah. Um, we went out for dinner straight after the draft with all the Freo representatives there, so all the recruiters. Um, Ross Lyon was there as well. Yep. And that was so that was his first year. So um, Mark Harvey oh, had, yeah, had left yeah, yep. a couple of months before that in the off in the off season, start of the off season anyway. Um, so we went out for dinner. Um, big big long table, so similar to this, but probably about three times the size. Obviously, all Freo. Um, workers on either side and um, I know my family and mum got up about three times like just walking out crying coming back in walking oh. up crying and then I remember going to bed that night because we were up uh, in Western Sydney for the draft so I was lucky That's obviously right, to, to go up yes, for the draft yes. um, we had a nice nice hotel with um, a couple of rooms and I remember it got to like the middle of the night and I just got woken up by just sobbing and it was like I could hear mum crying oh, in the yeah. other room oh my so I knew that like but once once I knew that she was going to get over and sort of see the environment I was living in I was living with Fifey when I first got drafted so that yep. was that was great yep. um, and then moved into a host family which once mum and dad met they were Honestly, the best people ever. Yeah. They're so so like mum and dad. So do you still talk to the host family? Yeah, now? Yep, yeah. Yep. Are they still? Do they still take on players there? No, nah, I don't take on players anymore. But they had so they had uh, Nick Subin and Fifey at yep. the start, and then myself, and then Tommy Sheridan because he saw how good the living conditions were. <laughs> <laughs> he um, he jumped on for a six months, sort of in my second year. Um, but yeah, once once mum got to see the she environment was okay I was in, it. yeah, she was fine. Because you moved pretty much. Because the draft was on the Friday, was it? And you move on Sunday? Is that how it was? Yeah, so I had my... Oh, I'm not sure exactly, but my last year's 12 exam must have been three days before the draft, oh, I think. So, right, so right. things uh, things moved pretty quickly. Um, that year 12 year is pretty funny because yeah. like, obviously <laughs> you focus on footy. Footy, that's it. And my, my dad being a principal at the time, like not of my school, but he was pretty strict on my brother but I think he knew sort of halfway through year 12 I was going to get drafted so he was a bit more lenient <laughs> with me so my brother was spewing about that um, but yeah things have worked out pretty well and then you obviously moved and um, how many did you play many games in your first year no so I played so I debuted round nine I think it was um, it was probably against us back against then because we would have we no good against then. Adelaide so I played um I played Adelaide and then I played Richmond at the G. Yep. That was my first win. So that was unbel- all my friends are Richmond supporters. So that was unreal having everyone there. And then we had a bye and then we played Essendon at home. Um, and then I got glandular fever and missed the oh, rest of the right. year. You missed the year. Yep. So that was that was pretty hard. More coming on terms with my body. Like I'd worked that hard from when I got drafted up until that point to put on, yeah. you know, six, seven kilos and then you lose five of them straight away yeah. back to square one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they had me in the gym pretty hard for the for the back end of that year, but it was pretty frustrating, but that's life. So you were 67 kilos and what are you now? Uh, I'm nearly 84. There you yeah. go. So a lot of size. It does. I in how many years? 11. 11. And yeah. that would have yeah. been, the fo- was that the focus for them when you first got there? To yeah. Put on weight straight away. It put was, it was, but under the environment, like, Obviously, Ross coming in, changing standards of what I, I don't know what was going on previously, but yeah. the team was still pretty good. Yeah, um, he was obviously trying to set the benchmark for everything. So obviously, skin folds and everything like that was real strict. So it was kind of like that, well, that was punishment, that. wasn't it? That's yeah, nice like for people who don't know, skinnies, skinnies is it's not that. Imp- There's clubs nowadays that don't um, prioritize it that much. We or clearly we, don't. Yeah. We don't prioritize yeah. it. But like you talk about Ross Lyon, um, wasn't there punishments if you weren't 
Yeah, so it was Fat Club. Yeah, yeah that was Fat and Club. And what was what would the like, what would the average be? Oh. Say across forty five people. I know it's positional. Yeah, the average would probably be about 45, 45 to forty eight, maybe. Yeah. So for small to mediums, um, you had to be under fifty. Yeah. Um, and if you weren't under fifty, you couldn't train with the main group, or if it was in season, you couldn't play until you're, That's uh, crazy. Until you're under. Wow. So not playing, <laughs> yes. I, I wouldn't be able to play. <laughs> nah, you yeah. Me too. Oh, your legs probably would be. Yeah, my. But that's the thing. That's why skinny. Like, yeah, it's it's uh, an irrelevant. It's Dex yeah. is probably weren't around back then. Yeah, yeah, but Dex is a pure. I oh, know. I oh, know. Fat know. mass, muscle yep. mass. Yep. Whatever. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was pretty strict. Um, obviously the rules moving into that. And for someone like me, like I remember at draft camp, I was 67 kilos, but I think my <laughs> skin folds were 43 or 44. So oh, I was like, wow. so my skinnies were, were never yeah, like yeah, heavy. 30. Yeah. So, um, but 40 is good. 40. Yeah. 40 is normal. Elite, yeah. Um, not like guys like Dunks who are <laughs> genetically gifted <laughs> and could, could eat hungry. I'm not the only bloke that says it. Uh, yeah, could, eat, could eat Maccas, KFC, Hungry Jacks three times, three times a day and still, still be under 35. What, what I want to know is how, how do you put on weight like that? Like you're 67 kilos. They ask you to put on weight. Yeah. Surely your skinnies are going to go up. Yeah, they would have gone up. Yeah, they went up, but they. So I, I remember I spent one day in Fat Club, which would have been oh, it was like my fourth year, I reckon. Probably coming off one of those America trips. <laughs> <laughs> Few too many uh, Texas barbecues. Um, thanks, mate. Sorry, mate. You just leaning back too much. Nah, all good. I'm getting, <laughs> getting excited about this. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Um, yeah, so I only spent one day in there and then it was like, I was right, I must have been like 50.3 or something. Oh. So it was like one day of, you just... And it's just like a, yeah, it's a sweat session, cardio session kind of thingy. Yeah, so you just like, not running laps as yeah. such, but you'd be doing, yeah, 12, 13k of running and then you'd do like a crossy on your day yeah. off or something like that. Wait, so I was extra on top of... No, yeah. the, no so the, the, cross the, is, the cross is the extra part, but oh, like yeah. the running was just getting whatever... Normal whatever the rest of the group was doing. So, yeah, I was I only had, yeah, one day in that. But it was pretty funny. At the time, I was living in an apartment in North Freo and it had a sauna. And I remember doing the skin fold test two days before we had to go back. And I was like, I'm over 50 here. So I spent about four hours in the sauna. I clearly didn't do anything, <laughs> did, but did I probably <laughs> lost about three kilos. Where, do you, where would you, where was it? Like every, every person has a spot where it holds. Mine's always my back. Yeah, so I had, I the, I had the fattest back at Freo, that but my more. brother had the fattest back at Cricket Victoria. So it's clearly a genetic, genetic, thing. A genetic issue. Uh, but yeah, if you want to store fat anywhere, it'd probably be your back because unless you got the most shredded back ever, no one can tell. <laughs> yeah, no one can tell at all. <laughs> Whereas if it's on the fifth back. or sixth ab, <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, nah, touching back on Ross Lyon and, and Freo, because you were you s draft 212, 212, 13, well, 212 to 15 was a pretty successful period for the footy club, yep. especially 213, because you guys made the granny, obviously didn't win and you obviously didn't play, but that would have been a pretty special time for you to be a part of. And you would have played with some great players as well. Yeah, it was amazing. The whole the whole town of Freo was so up and about throughout those years. And my so my first year... Uh, I'd want to say we finished seventh, I think, and we played Geelong. Or it might have been eighth, and we played Geelong at the MCG and beat them. And then so, but they had the, I think they had the double I chance. That, and yeah. then we got knocked out. It was a nice game. Um, and then we went grand final, and then we finished on top, I think, three years in a row. Um, I'd want to say 2016, we finished on top, and then the next year we were zero and 10. Yeah, I think. Right. So there was, yeah, a About big. 15, you would have finished on top. 15, maybe, 15 yeah. on top. Yeah, it was because 16, 16 grand. Yeah, us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So f 15 on top, 16, 0 and 10. And then it was sort of that was the, um, I wouldn't say like a massive rebuild, but they started to get a few more younger players yeah. in. And um, it's clearly worked. They're going really well at the moment. What, and obviously people who watch you now know you as a defender. You play purely as a defender and a very good defender in that one. Thank um, you, mate. But you obviously started as a forward. While well, Ross played you as a forward. Um, how did you find it up there? Because he had, he had little, you talk about, how the way coaches are, his expectation of you was to just bring pressure and pretty much that's it, wasn't it? Yeah, so I think from the outside world looking in as forwards, they always want to see um, guys kicking goals and that's like the big thing, oh, we want forwards kicking goals. But the role that I was playing, I mean, I was lucky enough to play, um, Pav was full forward at the time, um, Hayden Ballantyne, Michael Walters, yeah. um, Maney was flying Mainy as well. Would not miss it. <laughs> Shout out Chris Mayne, legend of a bloke, great housemate too. Um, he is the man. So we had a really good forward line. So my role was basically purely built off pressure. So you talk about KPIs, it was never like we wanted to kick, you know, a goal yeah. a game, two goals a game. It was more, you know, five or six tackles, um, you know, force high balls for our mids and, and forwards and um, and defenders to get involved as well. So, um, yeah, the KPIs were a little bit different. It was more role specific. 
Um, but yeah, I, I love my time at Freo. And then, that, sorry, I'll keep asking Josh, sorry. You're right, mate, I'm used to it. <laughs> oh, no. So then you would have, so <coughs> how long did that take for you to actually establish yourself as like set in the, in the, in the forward six? Yeah, um, so I, my, uh, obviously first year was glandular fever, second year I had OP. So Which was the grand final year, that yes. was 13, yep, yep, they made the granny. Yep, so um, I missed, oh, I'd probably want to say six, seven weeks with groin stuff in yep. my second year, and that was probably more just my body getting adjusted yeah. adjusted again to putting on, on the weight. Um, that was probably the biggest issue. We had a few guys with groin stuff um, early days, just purely obviously trying to put on weight. Um, so I reckon I went three games, Nine games, thirteen games, twelve games, and then I went and pre- pretty much, it. pretty much, yeah, nineteen, eighteen, yep, twenty, whatever it was. So yeah, okay, yep. So what kind of KPIs you were talking about before? You know, you said, you know, five or six tackles. When you didn't hit those, did you cop sprays from Ross? Like, I want to know what that was all about. I think it was probably more even just like opportunity. So whether if you weren't getting like actual tackle numbers yourself, it was more pressure based. So a lot of the times you might not get the tackle, but if you're forcing a turnover, that's obviously good enough. So so there were ways in the club that they measured that. Yeah, and it was just purely off sort of intent around the ball, and yeah. sort of my role um, was basically pressuring like the opposition winger. So you talk about like a defensive cover winger, like goose winger, that kind of stuff. Um, just coming off <laughs> coming off the back of them, and then just pretty much like they feed back. Have an opportunity to sort of so smash it. So it was a very structured kind of game plan, you would the say. Very, very, very structured. And then you transition to the Bulldogs, where well, our club, where um, Devo's just pretty much play on instinct, giving you a lot. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, and a, you change roles too. Yeah, change roles, but there's a lot more. There's a lot more freedom. So um, a lot of the times um, at Freo as a forward, um, especially playing with older guys, established older guys, it would kick in a lot of goals. A lot of mm. the time, you do a lot of sacrificial stuff. So it was blocking in the air. Um, blocking at ground level to try to get guys open, um, that kind of stuff. So um, you sort of you knew what you needed to do to stay in the team. So yep. that was obviously a good thing. Best player you played with at Freo? Matthew Pavlich. Yep. And then that was early days. And then once he started to transition out, I mean, Fifey, the, he obviously won. He's won two Brownlows now. Um, but the first Brownlow he won, like, mate. 2015. Yeah, 2015. 2015. <laughs> Better than I have in terms of memory. But... Um, <laughs> Mate, like honestly, that bloke is just unreal. Un- unreal. Like his ability, even his best is just. What made him? What like what made him so good? I know it's a it's such a broad question because you can simply say he just wins a lot of the footy, but yeah. like stuff away he did from the footy field. Like, did it surprise you? No, nah, it didn't surprise me at all. Man, he was always the hardest worker at the club. Um, something that I try to take a lot out of his game, especially early days. Like he was drafted, uh, obviously yeah, a lot different. Was, like he was yeah. he was a lot sort of bigger physically, six three. Yeah. Uh, big hands, everything like that. So, like, it was a bit different from him to me, but he he was drafted at 70, and I reckon he's he's probably at, like, 94, 95. <laughs> yeah, those, those photos those are Those early crazy. days photos, yep. yep. Crazy. Yeah, so he put on a lot of weight early, and his, his running wasn't affected. Like, he was as fit as one of the fit, well, not one of the fittest guys I've ever seen, but just his ability to cover ground, yeah, yep. um, get forward on teams and being able to impact in the air. That was yep. probably something that um, he stood out from the rest of the players, just his ability to float... Off ball, we had so many guys in that midfield at Fremantle that would do so many good defensive stuff um, and probably wouldn't get recognised as much. Nick Subin, Matt yeah. DeBoer um, did a lot of stuff to cover for the team. For, to yeah. obviously cover for Fifey because you to wanted cover to do Fifey, that's funny thing. We yeah, always have this conversation. Yeah. I remember his Brownlow medal speech and he was thanking – who was he thanking? Probably would have been those boys. Yeah, but he, I think he was thanking – for his second one, he was thanking Darcy Tucker yeah. for covering oh, was him. he? At yeah. stoppage, so yeah, he just yeah. have free reign, and then yeah, like don't don't like don't get it wrong, like when the ball's there, to be won or oh, defend, he he'd yeah. smash blokes. But yeah. like, I wouldn't. Say his spread was probably not his his biggest asset defensively, but like, mate, like it just certainly made up for yeah. what he would what he would do. Well, we think about most of the stars in the game. It's the spread defensively offensive. or both. Yeah, defensive yeah. Offensive is probably isn't that good, but it doesn't matter because if they're hurting you offensively, it doesn't if you can build a team based around defending that, then you're fine. I just remember growing up watching Fifey in 15 era, like star, mate. Because so that was your, that would have been your, that was my draft last year. year going into yeah. yeah, and just the way that he played, like the way he would take marks and yeah. impact, hit the scoreboard. He's um, a prototype midfielder nowadays. Is you getting everyone the size of him now? Man, they all love him. I think around. I think one player actually that I'll bring up that got a lot of recognition in Perth and obviously is well known, Stephen Hill. Like he's one of the best two way players I've played with. Um, obviously, Dunks is, is up. That? Dunks is up there as well, mate. Stephen Hill, like the amount of stuff he would do off ball yeah. for for the team was amazing, and was, obviously his skill. I was gonna say, is that was that based off? There's a difference. Is that based off because he's naturally just a good runner, or 
off him wanting to run both ways. No, nah, wanting to. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, a good runner as yeah. well. Probably not a good, as good a runner as Brad Hill. Yeah. He's a machine, isn't he? In that case. Both um, the Hill brothers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was one player that was just an absolute star. And obviously, Dave Mundy as well. He's yeah. still. Still dominating. And then there's Lockie Neal as well, who <laughs> yeah. obviously didn't win the Brownlow when you were there, but you would have seen early days how close good mates. he was. Yeah. yeah, real close mates. He um, yeah, he was just like a ready-made player. Yeah. Like when we were all drafted, he's a um, bit physically bigger than obviously uh, big Tommy legs. and myself. Yeah, big, big, strong <laughs> legs. Um, we all caught the few sprays early on, which uh, was all the welcome, wasn't, wasn't welcome day of Wasn't one of the whipping boys there early days? Yeah. Just get stuck into him. Well, we spoke yeah. recently about yeah. what Ross said to him once. About yeah. take the pumpkin off your head yeah. and yeah. Yeah. think right. you're a five year veteran or something like that. Yeah. That's right, he did mention we all, that. We all caught the couple of big sprays early, but um it was all for the good of the team. Nothing so. you want to share on the pod? Oh no, I can share <laughs> them if you want. Well, um, what, did, what yeah, well, yeah, share if you got Yeah, a so I've got a I've got a good one. So obviously obviously being drafted and wanting to impress, like you want to do everything you can to show that you're up to the level, especially in your first year. Um and you don't get that many opportunities, I wouldn't say, like at training besides like match simulation yeah. stuff. So like early first few weeks, Ross always used to say, so we used to do not necessarily like match him and stuff. It was match him, but it was more like low level stuff. And he'd say, you know, look after each other in contests, tackling, similar to what Bevo, like tackling, don't sling, don't most do clubs everything. Like that. That. Yeah, yeah, most clubs like that. Um, and I remember that it was like a quick kick down the line, force, and Zach, Zach Dawson's under a high ball and there's a couple of others wrestling. I'm like, I've got the best runner <laughs> jump here. <laughs> like I'm literally, I'm going to take the biggest hanger ever here. They're going to be playing this everywhere. Got up and I had the best ride and I've done the Jeremy Howe, gone in the hands and just <laughs> gone straight through. But I didn't even like knock him over, yeah. but just was literally just on his contest. literally on his head. <laughs> and Ross is blowing the whistle. Right, everyone, run a f- four hundred. Cross, <laughs> what did I tell you? So I've taken off for the four hundred and I'm running going, Oh no, everyone's gonna hate me. So we run the, and it's about forty degrees as well. We're about ten Ks in. Get to the finish, I'm like, Oh, sorry boys, and everyone was like, No, nah, mate, keep flying for I'm like, sweet. It's all good. Dude, what, did so, Zach, what did Zach Dawson say to you? He loved it. He loved it. He loved it. He's one of the best fellas of all time, actually. Shout out Dorso. Yeah, you said that he's a. There's, the Freo boys are all ripping fellas, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're all good lads. But then you fast track, obviously, to uh, two, end of 217. Yep, end of 2017. And then obviously moving to the Bulldogs. Um, re- well, well, obviously you have your reasons, but um, is there yeah, any reason in particular on why you wanted to come back? Yeah, I just felt a little bit. I was playing every week, which was good, but I just felt like I was a little bit um, stagnant in the role I was playing. Um, yep. There was a few things going on where, so I played, so back end of 2016, so second half of the year I played back. So I started forward and played back, and that was the first time I played back at AFL level. Did really well, um, got to my exit, and Ross was like, mate, you're going to be playing back next year. Um, and then sort of start of 2017, there's a lot of things that were, were going on, stuff with Shane Yaron. Um, they were moving Michael Walters into the midfield, Um and there was sort of a lack of another small forward. And we had a lot of defenders at the time. So he said, oh, we want you to go back and play forward again. Yeah. Um, which was fine. Like, I was happy to do anything for the team. It was yeah. like, like, if I was playing, I was happy. Um, but, yeah, just felt a little bit um, stagnated in my role and just felt like for my career I just wanted to change. And it wasn't like I didn't miss Melbourne. I was going like, to say, was that one that wasn't there? No, nah, I didn't miss Melbourne. And like, your mum wasn't crying anymore? No, nah, mum wasn't crying. Away. Nah, she was probably flat that I actually came back to, <laughs> to annoy her. But um, no, nah, I built a really strong friend friendship group outside of the footy club as well over in Freo. So I'm um, still very close with all those boys. So it was tough to make the decision to come back. But um, I think the timing was right. Uh, doggies had just – Bob Murphy and Matty Boyd had just left. So yep. there was sort yep. of um, – a, a, few, a couple of spots sort of half back uh, medium-sized defender so um a few teams interested but I, like I, I caught up with dogs and they were the only ones i ended up catching up with because yep. once i sort of walked out of that meeting and just told my manager i'm like it feels right so yeah. take us inside that meeting like you did you tell the club face to face or were you away when, when you told no them so on so i knew i was going so basically so i went back to melbourne caught up with um caught up with the doggies it was like yep this is me and then i had to go back to perth for the uh for the Doig medal, so the yep. best and fairest. Um and they would they would all would have known anyway. Um but like took Ross aside, spoke to him and he was fine. Like he knew it was coming. So um spoke to him, spoke to Brad Lloyd, who was the list manager at the time. Um he was great, got the deal done for me and um yeah, I owe a lot to that footy club. And it's a tough thing to do, isn't it, when you come to the conclusion that you don't want to be there. Well, not that you don't want to be there, but you just want to seek opportunity elsewhere because it's another big move for you because you're then, again, moving interstate away from where you'd been for, what, was it eight years you were there? Eight, I was six years six there. Years? Yeah, it's a big move because 
getting drafted at 17, like that's my whole Yeah, it's where you mature. Like, yeah, yeah, you mature it. Yeah, so there. I was just an immature 17 year old coming straight out of year 12. So and like now you're just an immature 29 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Still 28, mate, not 29 yet. <laughs> True. No, but the way you celebrated was you went to the States that year. Yeah, I went to the States um, and I still remember Austin, Texas. Dunks hates it, by the way. Yeah. One of the, one of the greatest places on earth. Um, yeah, and I remember we had we had quite a big night the night before. I didn't know when it was going to go through, but it was like the last day of the draft um, period. The trade yeah, period. Yeah, the trade yep, period, yep. sorry. Um, not draft period, trade period. And um, yeah, we had a relatively big night the night before. So yep. um, we got up, we did a run, we had brekkie and that, and then afternoon we we're having a nap because we were going to dinner after that and we we're going to have a couple of drinks at dinner. A couple of cheeky ones, um, <laughs> and yeah, so I had a nap. Woke up forty minutes later, and I had like five missed calls from my manager, and I was like, oh, I must right. have gone through. It's so gone I caught, so I called him over WhatsApp, and he was like, "Trade's gone through, mate. Yeah. Um, all good on the way to AFL house now to tick it off." So I was officially a Western so Bulldogs player. So then you flew back to Perth to get your stuff to. Go yeah, to, did yep. you drive? Did you did you have a car and everything? Did you drive I didn't there? drive. Nah, okay. too long, too long. But um, yeah, I had to organise all that, and it is a big move. Yeah. Like it's hard enough if you move. I mean, if you were moving clubs in Melbourne and you were moving house and going, yeah. you know, 10K away, it's not like that. It's, it's literally the like other side exactly. of the country. So yeah. there's a lot of things that come a lot slower than expected. Um, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have wanted to move a club during COVID. I wouldn't have known oh, what that would happen no if you were way. moving stuff across the country. But Because when, when you're in the States, Bonte and Jado were there too, weren't they? Yep. Like, so you got traded and then you caught up with them that night, was it? No, nah, it, was, it was the next day. Did so you know the boys too? Bonte and Jado? No. Nah, nah. Never met them. No, nah, so I'd met, met I'd actually no, so I'd met, Jado, I'd course. met Jado, I met Jado in like the first three days that they were in LA because um, I was traveling with Joel Hamling, um, obviously ex ex Bulldogs player. Yeah. So um, yeah, he got Jado over, met Jado, Ripping Lad, and then yeah, they were in Austin at the same time for Austin City Limits Music Festival. So I met them yeah the the day after that, and yeah, all been real close since. That's great. You obviously spoke about being in Austin. You've been on quite a few um, US trips too many one i do remember <laughs> seeing on socials was one of those experiences that they remember the remember the afl someone had partnered up and you got to meet like kevin durant shaquille o'neal go on the set that would have been pretty crazy that yeah, was that, that was, was was that your second year in the afl uh it no it would have been second would have been third, third because i was had to wait until i was 21 I might have that's been, right yeah might even been fourth because i was t- i was yeah because i was 21 21 december and i yeah. wouldn't have been able to go so i think it was my fourth year and it was a it was like a 12 day package wasn't it yeah so um company hype tours That's so um aaron, aaron ford and wa did a great job of um setting that up but i'd i'd actually so apparently they sent an email out um like an afl players email yeah and, AFL and it was AFLPA. Yeah. aflpa and i had something on that about the sponsorship for it um and so i'd never heard of it but so there was myself Lockie neil uh max duffy alex forster jack Hannah. so there was a few of us and um I think it was Max Duffy brought it up and said, oh, like, this sounds pretty sick. And he was WA based. So we caught up with him for coffee. And he was like, mate, like, you guys are the, have been the only ones so far that have spoken about it. Um, and I think they wanted to bring over about 12 people, but it turned out they only brought really us six. Yeah, the, yeah. I remember seeing a photo. Um, yeah, so we sort of, I mean, it's hard because of the players and their schedules and what they have to do. So there was a lot of things that were, I wouldn't say like promised, but it was like, you know, an itinerary of things. Yeah, an itinerary of things. Like, there's a fair chance we're going to meet Curry. We knew the KD, KD one in Oklahoma City was going to happen, and yeah. there was a few other things based on player schedules. Um, but yeah, like the first player we met was KD, and that was that's like pretty unreal. sick. We're in Oklahoma. We're in oh. Oklahoma City, and um, as an Aussie, like you'd probably only go there to watch Josh Giddy nowadays. Yeah, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't. Well, it's a nice place, but I wouldn't recommend like yep. going there for a week holiday. There's not that much to do. Um, and we were in an, one of the hotels we were staying at and KD was coming to the hotel. Because um, obviously all of us were all pumped up. <laughs> like, a, where is so him? We're sort of sitting in the lobby up against the window, having a look around, seeing every car that pulls in. Like, is this him? Is this him? And we just see this rangy pull in. We're like, this has to be him. Like, he's like 15 minutes late. This has to be him. And you see the door open. And then you see his leg. And this <laughs> it's like a longest, hockey stick. It was the longest leg <laughs> I've ever seen. I'm like, this is definitely him. Um, and, and it turned out to be Shaquille O'Neal. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, he had bigger legs than KD. I can give you the hot tip. Well, have you seen the video of Shaquille O'Neal shouting him out? Yeah, was. Yep. yep. Unreal. I'll yeah, take that one to the grave. That yeah. video. Um, but anyway, KD gets yeah, out. Yeah, we so we just come from Austin. So and he played at University of Texas. So we sort of had something that we could speak about, other than just pure yeah. basketball. But um, how long was he with you for? Having a chat with you for? Uh, he was with us for about half an hour at the hotel, so and cool. then the next night was opening night. Um, 
Thunder versus Spurs, and then we obviously saw him post game after that. He came and spoke to you as well. Yep. Anyone else? Westbrook or anyone? No, we tried to get Westbrook, but he, he was he was walking off. He wouldn't have. We nah, wouldn't be giving you the time. Who's this <laughs> bloke? Um, no, nah, but he obviously knew in the lead up to meeting us that we were athletes, and I think that helps a little yeah. bit. Um, so you can have more, I guess, a professional conversation in terms yeah. of just like the average fan. Yeah. I mean, we were we're all nuffy NBA fans. <laughs> nuffy, don't get us wrong, yeah, like, but we'd have to put it on <laughs> yeah. as if we were like, oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. How are you, Kevin? Yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you. Whatever. Don't call him like, Katie, yeah. call him Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking the hand, but um, were, you, were you a part of that video? Because I also remember, was it Lockie Lockie Neal, the one who was handballing with Steph? Were you there as well, Steph yep. Curry? Yep, wearing my fedora. Oh yes, yes, that's right, that's right. Oh man, I do Lord. remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's one. Even, day. Honestly, really even the even the sign, the framed sign Guernsey I've got in my room has like the photo of me at the bottom, like as a group with Curry, and I'm wearing the fedora. I'm like, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> It was cool back then to do it. So yeah, well, but, but as, anyway, as you look that, at it now, the whole so. Steph Curry thing would have been, well, that would have been as he was breaking out, becoming Stuff. Steph yep. Curry. Yeah, yep, yep. So we uh, we met him after a game. So we rocked up to the game, and it was um, Golden State and Memphis, hoping for a good game. This is right at the end of our ten days True. that we did. Yep. Um, and the score was like one hundred twenty-five to like seventy. It was the worst game Golden ever. State's way Golden State way, yeah. and I was like. In a sense, I was happy because I was like, they haven't lost. Like, he's going to be in a good mood. Yeah. Um, so we'd all met sort of, sort of outside the room. So you had, we all had these passes at the start of the game, which got us um, pre-game access. I think it was called the Lexus Club at the time. So it was yeah. just like food, drink, whatever. Um, so we're in there waiting post-game. And then we've sort of walked to this big door and there was a security guard there. And he knew we were coming, but we are, like no one really knew that he knew. And he goes, oh, he goes, I'm going to ask one question and if you get it wrong, you can't come in. But if you get it right, I'll open the doors. I'm like, all right, what is it? And he goes, who are you here for? And we said, Steph Curry. And he goes, good answer. <laughs> and he's opened up these doors like that. And as he opened it, Curry was pretty much coming from that door. So about 15, 20 metres cool. away, just walking towards us. And it was just like, well, That's Lockie Neal was the biggest Steph Curry fan yeah, ever. Okay. So he would have been in, in all sorts. But <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we, had a, we had a footy there. So we're kicking the footy with him for a bit. And probably the best part of all of it, the once we'd left, and so we met his missus, we met like his um, all his entourage. all his extended family's yeah. entourage, had the kick with them, and then as we left, we had to walk out through the players' car park. You walk about two hundred meters up to the gates, and as we walk out, we could hear all this like commotion going on, and we like turned around, and Steph Curry was kicking the footy in the car park with like a bunch of the gold. <laughs> That's State so boys. cool, mate. Oh. And I was walking. Was up, Andrew was Bogut like, there at the time? No. Nah, oh, nah. I was going to say he might trying to know how to kick yeah. footy. Yeah, and then sort of from that moment on, like it was just. Pandemonium yeah. Pretty much as soon as we got back yeah. And you just kept Meeting NBA players Was that the trip uh, As you said though With what you just said With Shaq Was that the trip Where Shaq shouted you out as well Yeah So that all happened On the one trip Yeah all happened In the one trip So <laughs> I went cool. It went Oh mate There was so much stuff That we did That was just Once we once we were on the plane home I was like I don't think we realised like, What well, we've done did, It's gone yeah. from like KD was the first one And then obviously The hotel And then post game And then we did uh, went to an Atlanta game and that's when Jeremy Lin was playing at Charlotte, I reckon. So we went to lunch with Jeremy Lin, <laughs> Cody Zeller. Oh, what else did we do? Mate, we were all over the place. Obviously in Atlanta at that same time, um, TNT Studios, so yeah. meeting Shark, getting the shout out was pretty sick as well. What did he say again? Shout out to my friend Hayden from Fremantle yeah. Ducker, is yeah, what yeah. he says? <laughs> Aussie football rules, he's playing tough, he's playing rough and rugged. Mate, I've listened to the video a thousand times, so I know exactly <laughs> he's what he's playing saying. rough and rugged. <laughs> Do you reckon? Little did he know I don't even put my head over it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you reckon if he walked in right now, he'd remember who you were? I'd get the video up. He's, he's actually in Melbourne in, in a couple yeah, of weeks. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, so I think we'll be seeing him again then. Yeah. So, right. Um, that's pretty crazy. Hopefully imagine if he remembers you. Oh, I'm going to send, I'll get Frenchie or something. I'll send the video to Frenchie. He'll send it to him. Hey, Hayden. Is that is that um story, like, out of all those stories, is that. Does the uh, having I've brought it up with him? He's probably knows I'm going to bring up the having the uh, the breakfast and the lunch and training with a, um, AB. AB. Is that does that top all that? Oh well, that that AB thing was just rogue as though. That, that's what <laughs> yeah, I was like. You still had breakfast with him. You cooked him breakfast. Yeah, well, Dunks cooked him breakfast. I was cutting up <laughs> some bison or whatever I was doing. Free um, range. It yeah. was all, it was free all range organic. box. Mate, he's organic, opened up his mate. fridge and he's like all organic, all this, all that. He's drinking bone broth. What's your? What's your? Remember that? What, what, what was that? Colostrum. Hey. Colostrum. Colostrum. He was having colostrum. Oh. What's and that? It's like milk. Oh. But well, it's the milk that's like. 
the <laughs> freshest milk that you can get. And it's good for your bones. Is that what it is? It's banned in Australia. Oh, yeah. no way. Yeah, you're not yeah. allowed to have it. Wow. But over there, they're allowed to have it. Yeah, wow. So he's just <laughs> smashing it down. <laughs> well, I've heard, Mate, some of I've heard yeah, his perspective. Like, nah. what's, what's yours of that That whole life? That whole day. day. <laughs> yeah, it all worked out. Uh well, I think rocking up, I think rocking up to the ground, it sort of got like what twenty minutes after he was supposed to be there. And I was like, "This isn't happening. Like, there's no way this." Because I'd organise it. Crows yeah. doubted yeah. me. He doubted me a lot. We remember we hired that car. We we're like, "We got to get a good car." Yeah, we had a drop, like, drop top Beamer. <laughs> <laughs> and there was you two and your Cam, man yeah. Cam. Yeah. And you'd organise through your manager. No, I'd organise it through Jamie Hepner, who was our GPS guy for Vic Country. Oh, okay, That's so we were in, we're in for Phoenix. Oh, and he works for. Yep. 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 And he, um, we were literally in Phoenix and he messaged me. He's like, oh, you wanna train with any that? chance that you're heading to Miami like yep. while you're here? And I was like, yeah. Um, we're actually heading there in a couple of days. He goes, oh, do you want to train with AB? And I was like, Andy Barnett was our weights coach at the time. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we've seen him, we've seen him for we've eight months of the year. <laughs> and then we've gone eight. <laughs> AB. So then we figure it out and then we, we organised a tour, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Drove there and. You can take over. And the so story. you've yeah. So we've, so we've got we've got to the what was it Hollywood Police Ovals? Is that what it was yeah. called? Something like that. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, yeah, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> um, Police ground. Like only cops are allowed on the ground. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So then how did you get on the ground? We didn't. Oh, we okay, were waiting okay. out. Yeah. The yeah. So we didn't. That was the thing. So we just we thought it was well, dodgy. As. Yeah. We were literally we were parked up. Well, we're pulled up, and I'm like, uh, in this neighbourhood, we're like. Yeah, you I'm pulled Petrified. up, pulled up in the drop top, and I'm like, oh no, I'm like, <laughs> people, like, can we put this, can we put this roof back on, please, before something happens? <laughs> playing music, playing yeah, music. literally just playing like f- future, like Drake as loud <laughs> as we could, and I was like, looking back down, I like, probably shouldn't have done that. But even we're just trying to kill in time at one stage, so we were just doing like these laps around sort of the back straights of it, which just driving like, if, around. If I had my time again, probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah, you know, yeah, like we're getting yeah. a few interesting looks. Yep. Um, but yeah, like it, man, it probably got to like what forty minutes after we thought. Oh, he's no show. I Did mean, you shoot um, Jamie? Yeah. A message? Yeah, I messaged him. And, and he still said, yeah, he's coming. He must have got on the phone to him okay. and said, The boys are there pretty much. Yeah, the boys are there. And then he said, Oh, come tell him to come to my house. So then we <laughs> literally got his address. So that that's that's that was probably the most exciting part. I got his address. Wait, so when they told you, because you've told me, I want Did you. So they're like, I'll come to my house. Were you thinking, hang on a minute, he's joking here, isn't he? Like, he can't be serious. Well, yeah, until we put his address in and we realised it was in a gated community. I'm like, this is probably his house. <laughs> How far was it from the Oval? 15, 20. Yeah, okay. 15, 20. We pulled up at like, so obviously, at back the, in the, the gates. And you've gone. At the gates and <laughs> big security guards there. And we're like, oh, we're here for Antonio Brown. He's like, who spoke to the security guard? Did you? Dunk yeah. Sid. Of course he did. I was shit scared, mate. I was in the passenger <laughs> seat just <laughs> on my phone. There you go, yeah. mate. <laughs> Literally. Um, and then yeah, we we're just like we're just saying we're here for Antonio Brown, and he then he him. Yeah, he called him. You could sort of hear him just like in, the, the, in the background, like yeah. yeah, let him through, let him through. <laughs> so then yeah, we drove through, and um, mate, we actually drove past his house because we thought it was about eight houses, but it was just one. <laughs> it's the biggest thing I've ever seen. Wait, what? Yeah, so his house was like on a corner. Yeah, and we drove past it, and it's all his. The whole thing was his. Yeah, the whole it would have been probably a hundred meters like <laughs> long. The block of like, wow. it's 12 bed, 14 bath. Dining room was like. For how many people? Two people. For him and his two kids were about four. Yeah, and his <laughs> girl. Oh, his girl. Yeah, his partner. Time. Yeah, anyway, keep going. <laughs> so you pulled up to the house. Yeah, so we pulled up the house. Um, and well, the beam, how in depth, how still, how how depth are we getting about on? this? Oh, you, yeah, well, say what you want. <laughs> was the roof still on? The car. <laughs> yeah, did you still have the roof off? Well, yeah, Fast and Drake. Off. Roof was, I mean, we're in a gated community. We're not, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> Mate, we drove past his house. He's got a Lamborghini Urus in the driveway, a Rolls Royce. <laughs> oh, and he, had, yeah. he had his garage open. There was like dirt bikes everywhere. I'm like, if you actually wanted to go in and take something, you'd take something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, rock up to the front door. I'll miss that first part of the story. So <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, we'll rock up to the front There's a funny front part door. of it first, yeah, but we'll yeah. save it for yeah, off we'll, air. We'll save it off air. Um, yeah, get to the front door, knock, and then no one answered. And we knocked again, and it was his trainer that answered it. He's like, yeah, come through, boys. Like, mate, this dining room is massive. Um, and obviously, you don't really know what to expect. I mean, there wasn't that much. Or th- I mean, there was a lot in the media at the time, mm. but, like, I mean, you don't really know until you meet him. Yeah. Um, well, to a certain extent anyway. Yeah. And, yeah, he was in the kitchen. He's just come up like the nicest guy ever. Um, and then oh, was, <laughs> he probably wanted us to come there because his chef was crook that day and probably wanted someone to cook him. <laughs> 
breakfast, so Dunks did it. <laughs> Didn't he ask you? Yeah, no, he's like, oh, d- <laughs> well, it's pretty much as soon as we met him, he was like, <laughs> oh, g'day guys, like, you guys good in the kitchen or what? Yeah, like, yeah that's what he yeah, said. What'd you say? And yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm like, cool. Like, <laughs> you want two minute noodles, brother? <laughs> so we literally walked in the kitchen and started cooking for him. You should, have, you should have whipped him up something, one of your dad's specials or something like a Rogan Josh. <laughs> yeah, Rogan Josh. But the thing was, the thing was, he wanted, of them. so like you think you just do eggs or whatever. He wanted bison, like what else did he put on it? Then we had like sausage, bison, eggs, sausage. Um, did you cut the bison? <laughs> yeah, he was. I was no, just filming. Was just, just I'll like, just send it all my mates. I have a look at this. And then he put up a story with us. He put up a story with us. Oh, did he? Yeah. Doing what? Cooking the food? Yeah. He was like videoed us and then everyone woke up in Australia because- I remember knew, seeing it. I was like, this is wild. We knew that everyone would wake up to yeah. his story and yeah. it's like got us three. He's tagged us all in it. Did he? Yep. Yeah. So we didn't put anything up at the start. He just yeah, he just put it up. So everyone that was following AB was obviously- And that messy. He's like, what? Like, <laughs> I won't put exactly what everyone said, but everyone's like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, why are you with AB? Did you, did you eat breakfast with him? Oh, well, yeah. we, we ate the food, yeah. <laughs> um, you would have been like, what's going on? I, it didn't really kick in until we drove off. Yeah, like, when we left. When we left at like 6pm at night because we were with him all day. So you had your brekkie and then he's like, let's go train. Well, no, we had our brekkie and then we sat on this dining table. It was about 16-seater and we were just all in one corner because there was no one else in the house. <laughs> besides besides shit, me. His camera crew. Yeah, besides his camera crew. Even before that, he goes, oh, he goes, um, you guys want me to call my camera crew and we'll film it? And we're like, oh, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not? <laughs> His He's camera doing, crew was there. For he was doing YouTube stuff at the time. So wow. it was like, yeah, 100%. So I'm like, let's this, do it. this is going to be a full episode on Dunks, myself, and Cam. And we were honestly in his YouTube video for 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And he just made us look that bad. Do on you the still have the YouTube video? Oh, it was a perennial training. Yeah. It wasn't actually in yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. No, because we were sitting at the dining table for literally probably an hour. And he was just going to hang. Didn't, didn't get one word in either. You mean, what was he saying? What was he? Everything he was going through at the time. Yeah, because, yep. It obviously so he was some telling legal us, issues. Yeah, but he was telling us the truth. Like oh, so he was telling you guys everything. And then he was telling us... Or well, whatever we thought was the truth coming from him. I mean, you never really know, yeah. but like... But yeah. And he was a free agent said, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he would get like live phone calls and his manager would be saying, Seattle, the keen. Like, yes, yes. Things like that. Where, so when... This was in October, right? Yep. So it's the NFL season's on and he wasn't playing, was he? No, nah, so he went... That was the year he went from uh, Oakland... And then they got rid of him. And then and he, he went to... Feet. Remember he had his frozen feet? Do you remember that? Yeah, when he did that cryo session cryo in thing. Paris. And and his feet, like, burnt. Did they? In he, the cryo oh, chamber. Because wow. he didn't put, he didn't put oh, the socks on. He didn't put the socks on. <laughs> do you remember it was on um, hard knocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, you can't yeah. do that. <laughs> and so, like, before we trained, he was, like, putting this stuff on his feet. It was pretty cool. So was now that really. that, he's forever affected with that, isn't he? Yeah. That's just an off-topic thing, but, yeah, wow. Yeah, so we had that that chat for about an hour. Mm. And then, because he wanted, because the thing with him is he wants to maximize whatever training session he can. So he's like, no, nah, we'll go at noon. So this is why we went to his house. Because he's like, I want to train at noon when it's the hottest. He dresses in full skins, like just to get the best sweat. Like sweat, yeah. Players, yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, he's like, I'll, I'll drive you boys. Um, he goes, the Lambo's unlocked. <laughs> so Mate, we get in the, oh. Got in his Lambo Urus and I'm like, <laughs> what is going on here? Like, um, waiting waiting it's about 10 minutes still isn't out like his trainers walked out his trainers like i don't know where he is um and we couldn't go in the lambo urus because his missus when she left when we rocked up had taken the keys to about three of his cars oh wow so he couldn't leave essentially <laughs> okay. so we took the drop top Dunks and, I <laughs> and cap and what did he, take? he took his, his trainer's, tra- trainer's range yeah there was range. another guy that rocked up though who was a cornerback yeah he was a super, super bowl, bowl winner Oh, right. I don't know if he was a starter or not. I think it was Denver. And he trained with you guys? He yeah. trained with us, but he was like, I don't know. It was, I don't he know was going trying. through a period where he just didn't want to train anymore. Okay. And AB was trying to help him oh, like, okay. get back to okay. his best. Yep. So when we were training, he was always like pushing him real hard. Really? And the other guy was like lipping back at him. He'd be like, mate, get like, get lower in your stance. Like, blah, blah, blah. like I did when I locked you up at <laughs> training that time. You that time. <laughs> <laughs> so you've gone and trained. What was that like for you? It was an eye opener. Well, we knew how quick he would be, but I guess until and his you feet him. ridiculous. And oh. for a lot of people at home that don't know, he had Christmas bells on his boots. boots. So the further he got away, <laughs> ding, 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 he just he's already twenty <laughs> meters away. <laughs> he's just gone. Because they were getting you to people seeing the footage. You were guarding him, weren't you? You both just had to play. You yeah, just had to try and lock him up. 
pretty much. So he did. Oh, he didn't really want to touch him. Yeah, because like, you said there was a couple times where he could have smashed him. Mate. Yeah, yeah. But no, because you said a couple times you'd get him at so the line of scrimmage. And you're one on one. Yeah. You just try and body him up, but you weren't. Yeah, but doing I was that. using hands. I was just but, using hands. Because you didn't want to. Because you didn't want to. Well, I mean, he's pretty unpredictable. Just hit him out of nowhere, and then he just cut shit. But one of, us, one of us, one of us was on the line with him. The other one was safety. Yeah, so you were playing a safety, and you were playing as a cornerback. Yeah, yeah. but and Dunks had just come off surgery, so Dunks had run around. So I had oh, no that's help. Finger right. surgery. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I was forcing him to the corner, and Dunks was way too slow to get there, just because <laughs> he had he couldn't run because of his hand. There's one clip where he gets me off the start, um, but again because. I mean, technically, you can start further than five meters away, but you just obviously can't use any body contact. I yeah. think that's a rule. You just got to yeah. run almost beside him. Yeah. But I was sort of like, I'll like I'll start up, and like if I had my time over again, and if I knew that like he wouldn't do anything if I was trying You'd to be try real physical, I yeah. just as soon as he moves, I would try checking whether that works or not. It probably wouldn't work. But I wonder what he would have done if you just freaking well, if, I, if I got him just straight. In the yeah, if you just went bang as he's trying to run, do you think he'd go at you? Probably, he probably would. <laughs> Yeah, probably wouldn't be here to tell the story, would you? No, no, not at all. So I was just using, I was just almost like hand checking as yeah, such. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's so fast, man. So did you fast. do any speed? Like, yeah, he taught did us a lot. Just of you it. three do some speed heaps stuff? of it, yeah. heaps of it at the start. He was teaching us, like he was actually showing us techniques. And mate, remember the next day, I saw we were. Mm. Yeah, he's probably using muscles that you're not kind of used to. Yeah, he did all his running barefoot as well. Um, and say we were doing like. Say that was like 50 metres. We'd do this drill where it was like these high swinging legs and it was like you'd have to get a low like number of reps to do it. The and least we, amount of steps. Least okay. amount of steps virtually. And we were doing like th- three check. We were doing like three big bounds more than he was oh, just because wow. he was just like the ability so to... So powerful. And he's not like physically bigger than you guys, was he? No, he's no. about 5'10", 5'11". So he was like 5'11". That blows your mind that he could do that and make yeah. athlete. Like you're six foot four, aren't you? Six three. three. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But it's just It's funny you see the difference Between how they train Versus how we train See there's that funny story I always wanted you to say Yeah I knew The camera crew <laughs> Yeah <laughs> So can you What was it? Of course I can mate <laughs> um, You know what yeah, he's so, going to say yeah. yeah so essentially at the start I mean we We do all this We did like an extended warm up It was more technique stuff He was sort of teaching us about More just techniques on running basically mm. And sort of where you're putting your feet And the high knees Whatever it was And then we do um, Oh it must have been Mate we did a lot of sets of it must have been like six sets of like six like genuine yeah. sprints. Like our homies were cooked the next day. How far are the sprints? Like oh, 30 metres. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So they're not that far, but yeah. it was like full. Yeah. And yeah, like yeah. Full tilt yeah. and then like five minutes off. Oh, yeah, so you're yeah. doing one sprint and five minutes off. Yeah. yeah. And this is when he goes. Yeah. So, so we do like, <laughs> so basically it was, we do, it wasn't really like five minutes in between like reps. It was the set. So like we do the sprint, walk back and he'd, like he was still quick on everybody. He was cooked. And then we'd finish like five reps and then Dunks and I would just walk, pick up the footy and just start like... Partner kick or whatever. Partner kick, yeah, so start. in between you'd be partner kick whilst yeah. he's cooked. But like going pretty hard partner yeah, kicks. Yeah, yeah. And he'd walk, he'd walk over to the bench, I'd grab his bottle, big camera crew comes to his face, <laughs> lean it down. <sighs> just nothing but hard work, <laughs> dedication. And started like doing this big rant and, then, and he's just like this and he's like, he's covered in sweat because he's in skins. And obviously that would go to his um, YouTube, his YouTube channel, channel. And I mean, he was... He's the most well, the quickest bike I've ever seen in person, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. and he's he's not necessarily young. Yeah. But then sometimes when you start seeing these NFL guys put up workout stuff on Insta or YouTube, you wonder like, <laughs> yeah. is it like that? They'll is do it like really like yeah, that? they'll yeah. do like two or three reps, like something unreal, and yeah. then just blow up. Yeah. Um. And even towards the end of the session, he was like, oh, "I'll do I'll do some stuff that you guys want." I was like, "Mate, brother, you do not want to do four hundreds, <laughs> mate." <laughs> Did you say that to him? Yeah. We had a kick with him and we literally rate. had probably a two minute kick yeah. and he was like Was he cooked? Yeah, he was done. Yeah. Well he was trying to keep the footy with bells on his boots. I <laughs> weren't necessarily going straight. <laughs> How long was the session? Like two hours? Yeah, yeah. we were there for two hours. Yeah. And then well that was the best bit after that. You didn't leave after that. You went back to his house, had dinner. This house. <laughs> made him dinner. Back, back to the crib. <laughs> you made him dinner. Yeah. <laughs> he had steaks there. He had steaks there and we had like... What was your job? To roast the potatoes or something? No, I was out, I was out the back playing with his kids actually. Yeah. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, so we actually wanted to use the pool. So but you've he, cooked in your... Yeah, I was babysitting. <laughs> he was up recording a, a new rap song or something. I don't know what he was doing. But, uh, you were babysitting, you were cooking. What was Cam doing? Playing do you want to know what Cam was doing? Yeah, what was he doing? He was trying to tune the next door neighbour. Oh, yeah, oh was, was he? Yeah. Oh, how? Well, we went out the front and... Um, before we left, yeah, to go before, to training. Yeah, before we left. And um, so the next door neighbour on the other side, there was 
like tons and tons of people. It was obviously like a someone's birthday. Um, there was like that many kids around. There was obviously like obviously their parents, whatever it was, like older si- whatever it was, and um, yeah, kind of like we were just all talking to all of them. But when we left. One of them, like a, a one of the little kids, yeah, one of the little kids ran over and was like, "Oh, follow whatever Instagram Someone was," say, yeah. and we were just looking. We knew who it was about because yeah. she was sort of just hanging there, but we were just laughing. And then, um, so it got Cam to do it, <laughs> yeah. And then, funny enough, Dunks left. So well, we went to Orlando maybe two days later, and then Dunks went straight from there to New York, and Cam and I went back to Miami. And then my brother met us there, and we went out that night, and Cam had actually Caught invited, oh actually gosh. invited, but she was saying like, "Mate, like." Obviously, living next door to Antonio, Antonio Brown, like Brown. you see a fair bit of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, they also thought we were NFL players. Because yeah. did they? When we walked out, they were like, oh, who do you play for? Like, should have made something. I was something saying, I was, I was his quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> if only you said this jelly well, arm. You just, <laughs> you just like, go around with him. So if he's a free agent, you're a free agent. Yeah, is that what you were saying? Pretty much. <laughs> No, I just said, I just said, oh, I'm, I'm his quarterback as a joke. And then all the kids like started running. Right. I had a ball. And they're like, throw us the Were ball. Were you throwing it? Yeah, so I was throwing <laughs> it. But I was like, oh, a bit, shoulders a bit sore. Like, just throwing about 20 oh, metres. What did you say you were? <laughs> Nothing. I just went along with it. So you got a linebacker or something? Yeah. But no, nah, it was awesome. He was good. He was actually very good to us. Like, he could have just been no, so Mate, it's one of the greatest stories I've ever heard. The fact that you actually spent the whole day with him. And you had to cook for him. <laughs> and you He cooked twice. Not twice. once. Twice. <laughs> It was pretty good food. No, I was on babysitting duty. So how did good. You eat, did you eat the dinner with him and then go? Yeah. yeah okay. We left at about 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> it's, so a long, like, it's a long day. Long day. Did he spend much time doing recovery? Yeah, he's got a pool and stuff. Nah, and nah. He wouldn't jump in the sauna. Did the he have pool, a sauna and the stuff? The pool was filthy. Remember the pool? Yeah. We were going to use the pool and then it was, yeah, pretty filthy. So um, I that was part of the reason. there for a long like, it sort of felt like his house was yeah. a bit... He's probably got yeah. several house, houses. Yeah, well, he had a lot of packed boxes and stuff, so I think he just said... You didn't, you didn't take one of the NFL balls, did you? Because he got one. Mate, oh, that was, well, that's it's one of my biggest regrets. Regret. Up, up there with the fedora, Steph Coho, that's one of my biggest regrets. Because he it was like a free and rain. The, and, the, and the car that you drove in? Mate, he had... <laughs> oh, it's elite, bro. He had 40, like, touchdown, touchdown balls. Touchdown balls. Like, but we were training with some. Yeah. And then around the house, like, you'd just walk around, you'd see... One the touchdown ball. Everywhere. Why wouldn't you... Why... What made you not think to grab one? I don't know. Well, Dunks was just like, oh, do you have, like, any any spare balls sitting around or whatever? He's like, yeah, just just take them. Grab whichever one you want. He's like, go and look in the back of the Lambo. There's a couple of good ones in and there. And you went in there and had a look. I was looking for the car keys in that Lambo, I reckon. It would have been a bit <laughs> nicer than the drop top. Does he still follow you? on? Because he followed you for a bit on socials, didn't I he? I actually don't know if he does. He doesn't follow me anymore. The funny thing was he never followed Cam, our mate, so Cam was filthy. Filthy. Um, but Cam, I think, did Cam, Cam didn't even get tagged in his Insta story either, did he? <laughs> no, he did. I tagged Oh, no, he yeah, did. I made sure. Well, I'm sure, I'm, I've got no doubt once this season's done, because we can travel again, you'll be going back to the States. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Go catch up with but AB. Yeah. You've got to talk about who else you've met over there, because we've met a few people. You guys have some crazy people. Yeah, I've met a lot of people. Like Iggy. Yeah, I meant I'll go through I'll go through means <laughs> you guys you guys chat. A couple nights on um just you know enjoying yourself in the off season and wasn't there games where was it Terry Rosier was playing a game? Oh, like we a can talk days? about that story. Which Terry Rosier, scary Terry. I don't think I don't think Dunks remembers it actually. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> we were in um we went to Boston and we had uh we well, got line. Benny got Graham got actually set us up. Didn't he? Wasn't, wasn't yeah, there? It is. Wasn't who's that? Is that the That's game? Wasn't I? Wasn't yeah. scary Terry playing a game in a couple of days and he's walking in with a Hennessy bottle or something? Yeah, you can tell the story. Well, we got – so Benny Graham set us up with the tickets. So we went to the game and then Crosby had a nightlife host in New York that then connected this one – two one in of Boston. Of course I do, mate. So Waleed was his name and we went to Boston and he had a restaurant. He owns a restaurant and then sure enough, upstairs, nightclub. So he owns both. Yep. So we just went to the restaurant, tried literally everything on the menu. Yep. Every drink. All every, free? Yeah. All free? All paid for. Like, it was unbelievable. Good joint, really yeah, good joint. Lead joint. But anyway, so you're up there and you have we a drink. We go upstairs, no one's there. Oh right, it was, it was, it was a was Tuesday night, I think. Obviously, you know the first ones in this in this joint, and he's like, just go and sit over there, like, and wait a bit, have a few drinks, whatever. Straight to the, he sent us straight to the booth, right? And <laughs> was it late? Was it early in the night? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. that late. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, was, I would have <laughs> been ten o'clock. Ten, yeah, okay. Ten. You take over because you're good at. Oh, wait, literally no one was there. It was just you two. Just us. Just pretty much two us. people in the bar. Yep. Yeah. So in his actual like restaurant part, that was busy. Yep. So he's taking us through all the taste tests of his menu and then all the different cocktails, whatever it was. Um, and he goes, "Yeah, well, I'll we'll take out this. Ele- it was like this private elevator private that elevator. he reckons he only 
takes a big dog's up. So I don't know how I was in there. I know I dunked in there. I was gonna, wa- I was gonna walk up the stairs. Anyway, so we get up there, and he goes, "Oh, that's that's your booth there." He goes, "Those girls there will look after you." So they're just like the the bottle girls. Um, and he said, uh, he goes, oh, I've got to go do some stuff. I'll be back in about half an hour. So Dunks and I, I mean, I don't think we even had any. Do we have anything to drink at the game? I can't remember. Nah, barely. barely. Probably barely anything. Yeah. Um, and so we obviously get to our get to our booth. There's not really anyone in there. People were starting to come through. And so there's like, I don't know, a bottle of 1942 tequila. Yeah. Um, and then there's like vodka and everything. And literally us two. And I'm like, weird. Like there is no chance. Of, like I'll be... <laughs> I'll be getting resuscitated <laughs> if we go <laughs> this. <laughs> and so with ducks. So we were just enjoying a couple of drinks and like um just speaking to the bottle girls. Obviously they were both Boston locals and we'd we'd never been to Boston before. So sort yep. of asked them what we like what we should do, where we should where we should go. And then it started to get busy pretty quick. Like I think there would have been a lot of people coming from the game. They must have because people in America eat dinner real late. Like yeah. yep. I'll eat dinner at like ten o'clock at night. So yep. people are probably all coming from dinner there. Um so it started to get pretty busy and then, yeah, sort of waiting for Waleed and I'm like, what's he doing? Like, it's just Dunks and I. Like, if, if we get the bill at the end of the night, like, we're, we're paying 1500 US to be absolutely Polack. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And because we, we had to catch a train back to New York the next day. At oh, about, that's right. That's another story. Good morning. 8.30. Yeah, yeah. 8.30 in the morning. Um, and then, yeah, so it's pretty packed at this stage. See the elevator doors open and I'm like, it has to be him. He owns the place or like one of the managers or whatever. And so he's coming out of the elevator with a bunch of people. Um, and obviously Dunks and I like fair few like tall boys in there as well. So we're sort of looking like, who's this? Blah, blah, blah. And they're walking straight towards our table. And I was like, well, these, these boys can polish off the drink. So I don't think we'll be able to do it. <laughs> um, and then we realised it was Terry Rosier. It was like Terry Rosier, his mum, like must have been his brothers yeah, yeah. or his cousins. His or just played a game. Just yeah, played just, a game. just played a game. Um, so yeah, so um, well, Leeds introduced us to Terry Rosier, a like, great fella, ripper. Um, and then he ordered a bottle of Hennessy, which is pretty <laughs> much pretty much where the story goes downhill. <laughs> and it's just drinking Hennessy from shots. Bottle. So it was like a shot worse than you shot every <laughs> well, <laughs> shot. shot every literally five minutes. And you guys are going shot. For <laughs> shot we, we, we'd already had a couple of drinks, but not really. Yeah, but, mate. By the and end towards of the, night, the end, it was literally I was cross eyed, and I was like, "Yep, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do it because I like we're like." Don't get this opportunity off yeah. like Yeah, drink it was awesome. Terry, it was yeah. awesome. And what if he goes, oh, you, you want a shot? And he's half giving it to you. You're not going to say, no, Terry. Ter- Terry, my brother, nah. <laughs> He'd probably look at you and just go, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we did that for a while. Um, and then he pretty much, well, I think he- We I th- all left. I think he thought Josh was talking to his girlfriend at the time, but he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like in the booth, she sat next to me and then he would come and sit next to me. We were, talk- we were talking heaps. Yep. But yeah, Cross thought he was, he thought I was- uh, It's filthy, yeah. Yeah. I was probably more filthy in the fact that he was like, oh, you boys, Aussies, blah, blah, blah. Like, gets his phone out. Like, put your Instas in. Put the Instagram in. Did. And I'm yeah. like, I'm not wear certain for Celtics tickets next year. <laughs> I reckon by the time he got in his Uber, I was already unfollowed. <laughs> really? Legit. Yeah, because the next morning we were on the train and we checked him. He unfollowed him. Oh, yeah. we're still chatting to him though. So I'm like, I don't, I don't really yeah. care. Was, um, that, was that the night when DeMarcus Cousins was there too? Didn't you say you seen oh, him nah, and he gave was, you nothing? That was like... Gave you that, nothing. That, yeah, that was 2016. That was, yeah, that was LA, wasn't it? Was only nah, this was in Miami. This was, yeah. Did he look at you like a piece of meat? Like, who's this bloke? He just like nodded and I was like, this bloke's that scary. <laughs> um, yeah, but the worst thing was like that that morning. So what happened was when we left, um, one of the managers of the place, Waleed said to her, oh, walk these boys home. Like, we weren't even that bad. What time was, was it? Was It would have been like early oh, I don't morning. even know. Three, four o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so we said we told her where we we're staying. We're close, so we would have obviously got there fine anyway. Um, but I think for him, he was probably just like, just give him the full treatment. Like yeah. we get all this, may as well like get him home safe. We were fine. Um, but I remember getting to like this is another story, even like the check in about our whole Airbnb. Oh, that was yeah. bizarre. We got a good pad, but it was like illegal. Like the way that the setup, you know, when you go to an Airbnb yeah. and they're not meant to Airbnb, yeah. so they like do the dodgy. So we were in this back lift, like up to the room. Full view of the city. Oh wow! Yeah, it was unbelievable. How, like, yeah, so we've apartment. so we've walked into the lobby of it, and obviously at this stage, all we want to do is just go to bed, go to sleep. You had to train yeah. in the morning at eight thirty, and then get in the lobby, and then there's a group of about ten people that were behind us, like people had been at the club, and we're like, there is, oh, like, I don't know if they think that we're having like an after party, we're not. <laughs> They literally followed us, like. Oh, they thought you guys were having a party. No, afterwards. no. Well, what happened was, was one of them was just was just staying there, yeah. so they were having their own party. But yeah. we were just like, oh, like we thought that they were following us, like ready to go into our room. Yeah, and, and I was just like, oh, nah. So, 
yeah, we went to bed at about 4.30 and we had to be at the train station about 8. I and I'm waking up at like 8.15 and I was like, oh. Yeah, Josh walks in my room and no joke, I was just <laughs> down. I, I, like, I thought I'd packed my bag like when I got home yeah. and it was like well, all over the place. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a bad tram ride home. No, it was good. We've had some good trips. I legit feel like we could talk for hours. We actually could. Hours Honestly, man. Hours. You know me telling stories. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> but no, we have. We've met a lot of good people over there. Probably uh, thanks to Jen. Yeah. Looking after Well, us. that's probably been the issue with me like that I keep going back because I always said that I'd do Europe the year after yeah. I hit the States. But like the more I've been, the more people I've met. And you I'm, just like, keep going. It's funny, it sounds like it gets literally gets cheaper yeah. every year as yeah, well. Because you, you meet just people, meet more yeah. people. So And as you said, you're gonna you're literally gonna go this year as well, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. How exciting is that? And I'll be good. I'll be with, there with you two boys too. Favorite favorite city? Uh Miami. Why? Just the weather. What about your favorite sport between the NFL and the NBA? It used to be NBA. I didn't even used to like NFL, Mine but used to be now, NBA now too. it's the other way. And N- the NFL. Other <laughs> yep. And that's purely because of fantasy. Yep. <laughs> well, you went to you went to the um you went you went to America over well yeah you went over Christmas mm. and you were stuck there for an extra two two s- weeks. You're stuck there for an extra two weeks. Yep. Um, and you went to actually one of the games, didn't you? Yeah, so I went to... Because you're an, um, obviously a Cardinals fan as well. Yeah, so I went to Rams-Cardinals, which was the playoff game. And I did uh, Ohio State and Utah for the Rose Bowl as well, which was good. That's great. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Stories yeah. for days, this bloke. Yep. Absolutely. Go on and on and on. Should we touch on footy? Or yeah. Um, yeah, mate. Let's do it. Yeah. Ask away. So how's your year going, Crosby? Tell us about that. It hasn't been ideal at yeah. this stage. Um, started off the year really well. Um, obviously played in the uh, preseason game against Brisbane. Uh, played well. Uh, Melbourne round one played well. And then round two, um, as we all know, fainted at halftime, mm. which wasn't ideal, um, especially with all the anti-vaxxers at say, the time, which sort of took off. Thing? Yeah, Because um, there, was, there was footage of it as well. Yeah, the footage probably well, it wasn't ideal in the fact that I was lucky because mum and dad were at the game. So they got told as soon as I went down, um, granny obviously messaged him saying, he's all good, he's fainted, like we've done yep. um, we've done, done the quick ECG, it's all good. And then, um, yeah, they've obviously shown it on the broadcast. I don't know when they showed that. It must have been third quarter. I think it was middle of third. Yeah, third quarter or something like that. Um, <coughs> so I remember obviously getting access to my phone after the game and everything had just blown up. Like I think people thought I was – getting bloody resuscitated or something. <laughs> I don't know what was going on, but like my phone was going nuts. And yeah. um, I remember opening one for my mate and all it said was, here come the anti-vaxxers. Oh. And um, when I looked at my Twitter, it was just, everything was just about that. Yeah, that yep. And I think because that was the first time that a player had shown like... Some uh, kind of... In yeah, our sport. Yeah. In our sport. Yeah, in our yeah. sport. And yeah. it was obviously happening around the world. So yep. everyone was sort of running with, this is the first AFL player to be... Yeah sidetracked with yeah. <laughs> vaccine related issues yeah. um and then but you were good pretty quickly i was gonna later. say yeah, yeah you were yeah, fine yeah. a couple of days later yeah yeah so that was on the thursday and then i was fine over the weekend just did some heart tests and stuff and that was sweet um and then what happened with ollie wines happened a That's week right. after that yeah. yep, yep. um and then sort of i thought that was when all the stuff was going to stop but it sort yeah. of started again and then they started to pair me with him and all this kind of stuff so um yeah going on from then that was probably like a it's been like a tough run because i felt like it was almost like resetting like i i felt fine so i played the week after i just played on limited minutes and then i was limited minutes again in the vfl and then it built up some really good form but our backs have been playing pretty well at the moment yep. so um yeah it's got to buy my time and, and keep playing good footy and hopefully get back in how do you what's your mindset like like how do you manage mm. obviously playing good footy in the vfl and how do you, you we've talked about it a bit but what's your what's your thought process what do you what do you tell yourself Oh, pretty much just control what you can control. And mm. I think, well, no one, obviously it's extremely disappointing. Like when you're not playing AFL footy, that's what you want to do. Um, obviously you want your, your family and your friends to be able to watch as well. Um, but at the end of the day, like you've just got to try keep playing good footy and when your opportunity comes, take it. And um, it's probably been a different mindset. Like early on when I was out of the team this year, um, we had a lot of injuries as well. So 
at VFL we were struggling. Um, had a lot of young guys playing as well, which is fun. like it's fun. I enjoy playing with the young guys, like seeing their development throughout the year. But you sort of want to be playing with guys that are around your yeah. age as well at the same time. So um, I found it a little bit easier the last few weeks. Um, and again, just yeah, just keep working hard, and and when your opportunity comes, take it. Mm. Well, the thing is, you're playing like, and you're doing everything right. We see, obviously, watching the VFL games and the highlights, we see not only a probably the best player out there week in week out but your leadership stands up and um it must give you great confidence that when you do get the call to come back and back into the afl you'll be able to have an impact straight away yeah i'm, I'm still confident in my abilities and i think that the more work you put in it's all going to come out on game day so um i'll play enough footy to know that i'm still capable at the level and i think that's probably the one thing that you hope people don't think about the way you're playing footy is, oh, he's getting a little bit older. Yep. Does, does he still have it? This is why he's not playing. Where I feel like I'm at a sweet spot in my age. My body still feels good. Yep. I don't feel like I've lost any athleticism or speed or anything like that. So, um, again, our backs have been doing really well um, and we've been defending a lot of entries. But at the same time, I'm just sort of waiting for my opportunity. And um, I guess like the environment I have for footy, no one wants a guy that's just complaining if he's not playing yep. as well. And I think that's something that you don't want to be known for is if things aren't going your way, you blow up. Absolutely. So that's again, a, that's like a really good point. Really I, good point because it affects yeah. everyone else around you. Yeah. If you. I think the points you've just made about everything, your mindset, the way you play, the way you're going into the games, for people that watch our potty, and there's a lot of young aspiring footy players out there, mm. they should take that on board because for you to be doing that now at you know, obviously the age of 28, um, you're still in – you know, as I said, we watch you. We're, we're, we are very biased because we love you, yeah. but you're you're flying like you're you're more than capable to come in and play. You know, any, any role in any position. Mm. Yeah. Um, people who see that and hear you talk about that, they should just take a lot out of that because yeah, it's something that um you take on every day. So good on you, mate. Appreciate, it, brother. Thank you. It's <laughs> a good way to end it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Crosby, for coming. I, I on, reckon mate. this will be the longest, uh, the longest step, well and truly. Oh, is it? Nah, it's only hour fifteen. On I the feel like we've talking, we've spoken for ages. I mean, Jack's over there sleeping pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the big bean bag over there. We can have volume two podcasts. We if will you have a volume stories. two. We actually should because so you know what I wanted questions. to talk about. Our yeah. running in New York. Yeah, this. Oh, that's another. That's, that's just the, pre that's another story that. Oh. That was scary. Like, it was the scariest moment we've ever had in the States. Really? Yep. You've never told me this. Yeah, that's... Uh... We'll do it another time. Oh, we'll have to do it another time. Yeah, right. Pleasure, boys. Thanks, Crosby. Well done, mate. Appreciate it.